Hey all, it's Nim or Nim McCree if you're feeling professional and welcome to the YouTube video. Now today we're going to be talking about Activision Blizzard and support site closures. But before we do that, it's time to play nobody's favorite mini game, Saints or Sinners. Now how this works is, in a couple of seconds, I'm going to throw an image up on the screen. It's your job to guess whether that person is generally considered a boon to humanity or a bane to humanity. If you guess right, congratulations, you are the big winner. If you guess wrong, your punishment is to click the subscribe button, which will give you regular World of Warcraft content uploaded into your feed directly. You guys ready? All right, in three, two, one, boop. And that picture is of Dr. Jonas Salk, generally considered a boon to humanity. He came up with the original polio vaccine and did not patent it. He died a moderately wealthy man, beloved by billions. Thank you, Dr. Salk, for all your contributions. And of course, later his formula was improved upon. All right, with that said, I look forward to the new subs. Let me know in the comments below what you guessed. And it's on to the video. So it seems Activision Blizzard is preparing for more layoffs in the European and Latin American offices. Following this week's layoff in esports and live events division, in which the people laid off got $200 Battle.net cash. Yay! $200 Battle.net cash! I know that you're out of a job, but nothing quite takes the sting out of being fired, despite saying that they would keep jobs because microtransactions exist, or at least that's the justification, like getting money for loot boxes. I can't actually parody that part of the industry. I tried with that. And that's what happened. We are beyond parity. Activision Blizzard is preparing another round of layoffs intended to scale back non-development teams and consolidate support operations across Europe and Latin America. Consolidating publishing offices in five European countries down to one hub in the United Kingdom, while simultaneously dismissing nearly the entire Brazil and Latin America operations team. As of right now, the number of affected employees is unknown, but the downsizing is said to be limited to publishing and support operations without impacting development or customer support staff. All right, so that's not terrible news to hear without development and customer support staff, but I do want to raise a point. Anytime there's a mass layoff or a downsizing, no matter who you are in the company, you're affected. It affects morale because those people are just like you. They were employees, they were working, and now they're gone. How long till you're gone? How long till you're laid off? How long till you're, you're made redundant? And if we remember a couple of years ago, they laid off 800 employees, and then a few months later, had postings for those same positions and did not give the employees the right of first refusal where they could say like, oh, hey, you know, I know this was your job and you were affected, do you want it back? They didn't do that. I think that was uh, an ethical mistake and an error, but what am I? Just a YouTuber, a streamer, handsome, charismatic man. Now, according to gamesindustry.biz sources, Activision is preparing for layoffs intending on consolidating publishing operations across five European countries down to one hub in the United Kingdom. The cuts will target Activision Blizzard offices in Germany, France, Spain, the UK, and Netherlands. Games industry had said, players are increasingly choosing to connect with our games digitally, and Activision Blizzard represented said when asked about closures. Well, I've tried to call places, and you keep routing me through automation phones where I can't talk to somebody, because talking to people is expensive for you. So it's not really that we're choosing to connect to your games digitally, it's that you've made it so difficult and so painful to talk to somebody that I have to do it digitally. Because otherwise, I'm never going to get through. We have shared plans with our teams in Europe for how we would evolve as an organization, adapting to this change to serve our players and best positioning the region for future growth. We will be taking extensive steps to support all employees and ease the, ease the transition for those of our colleagues who might be impacted by these proposed changes. Okay, well, that's good. I wonder what they're going to do. I wonder if there's a severance or if maybe there's some employment assistance or maybe they'll get you know, preferential treatment if they decide to transfer to a different branch of Blizzard slash Activision, you know, that would be a good idea. I don't know if that is. They, they don't say anything there. And I can understand that, you know, maybe they don't have the plan entirely out. They're just going to lay people off, and it happens. People lay, they, the game companies lay people off all the time. 
Uh, they bring in bodies, they bring in QA testers, they bring in QC. And one of the things that I want to mention is that a lot of these people are paid very little. And they're just, you got to go, 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 go. There are numerous reports of crunch in the video game industry. And rightly, there's a lot of backlash to it. I personally was glad that WoW got another month to develop. I know a month doesn't seem like a lot of time, and it, it really isn't, but I remember if it would have launched on October 23rd as opposed to November, I think it was November 23rd, it would have been a real problem. I mean, there would have been a lot more bugs than we had now, and we still have bugs. In fact, I just did a video on a huge Demon Hunter bug that's been existed since Battle for Azeroth. You can check it. Probably in the cards. Brazilian games and technology platform The Enemy has similarly reported the dismissal of nearly the entire Brazil and Latin American operations team, retaining only the region's marketing manager, although they stress that no games or services, such as Battle.net, would be affected by the change, and they would retain representatives for communication with the press and the community in Brazil. So if you got rid of everybody but the marketing manager, the PR people, and the customer support staff, what about internal IT, right? Like, I can't be the only one who, when I get a Windows update, my audio settings, I might as well just throw them out of the window because they're gone. They, they're, they're gone, and I have, to, I have to then reset them. And I'm just one guy. A whole company? There's going to be problems. Those, uh, internal IT is important. Now, you could, I guess you could shift it all contract and do it on demand, but you're going to pay a premium for that. Maybe that's part of the business. Maybe they'll be like, oh, we'll take the one-time spike and everything's good, but I don't know. Again, I'm, I'm not so much a business person. I'm an engineer. The enemy translated, the enemy, hyphen, or uh, parentheses, translated, uh, the changes are not limited to Brazil and the Latin market. All small Blizzard teams are being shut down, explained one of these sources. All non-game development teams now report to Activision. Sought by the enemy, Activision Blizzard sent the following statement. Players are increasingly choosing to connect to our games digitally. Everything we do is from the perspective of our players, and in the past year we have explored how we can best meet your needs. Our Latin American teams had to evolve, adapting to this change to better serve our players and prepare the region for the next stages of growth. We are taking a number of steps to support those affected. All right. So seeing as how they're, they're doing that, they're, they're, we're having closures, I want to mention something, right? Now, I'm not going to say that Bobby Kotick got too much money, right? That wouldn't be proper. I, I really, I don't, think, I don't think that would be proper for, for anything particularly. What I do want to mention, is we're gonna go, we're gonna go here, we're gonna, we're gonna show you guys something here. What I do want to mention is that Activision Chief Bobby Kotick's stock bonus was condemned by an investment group. Now, if you're not familiar with investment groups, and hey, listen, you may not be, right? I know Wall Street Bets was a big thing, but generally, they're big into making money. They like the cash. They're a fan of, like, they watch Wall Street and be like, oh, if only, if only. They look at the SEC and they're like, hiss, it burns. Ah, unregulated financial speculation burns. We must unregulate everything. So they're they're, they're big into money. So let's 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 take a look here, right? Let's take a look. Bam, and probably gonna be some ads or something, but we'll see. Uh, look like see, you know, it's Activision Chief Bobby Cot. Oh, here we go. Uh, all those ads. Activision Chief Bobby Kotick stock bonus condemned by investment group. Uh, CTW, which holds directors accountable for unethical corporate behavior, calls Kotick's bonus unjustified. The complaint follows a wave of layoffs at Activision Blizzard which I agree. So CTW Investment Group, which describes itself as an investment company that holds directors accountable for irresponsible and unethical corporate behavior and excessive executive pay, is up in arms about a stock bonus due to Activision Blizzard CEO Bobby Kotick. While CTW claims it's a $200 million bonus, a rep for Activision told the rep that no bonus has been paid yet and the amount of that bonus is currently undetermined. The CTW slam on Kotick's shareholder value creation incentive, SBCI, comes at the heels of an announcement earlier this week that Activision laid off nearly 190 employees, including 50 from the company's esports division, which mainly handles live events. Now, we're not going to go through the rest of the article. We don't, we, I mean, well, we can. We can. We can take a look here. Uh, players are increasingly choosing Connect. We've read that before. Uh, CTW's investment group director, executive compensation research, Michael Varner, issued the following statement, provided the rep to the investment company. 
While the increase in Activision stock price is somewhat commendable, as we stated last year and continue to assert, this achievement alone does not justify such a substantial pay outcome for the CEO. There are many factors that contribute to a rise in this particular company's stock price that may not be directly attributable to Robert Kotick's leadership. The use of video games as one of the few entertainment options available amid the COVID-19 pandemic, for example, has been a boon to many companies in the gaming industry, irrespective of executive talent or strategic decisions. According to the latest SEC filings, Kotick's contract and bonus payment schedule, his current contract, including SVCI bonuses tied to performance, have been in place since 2016. This is not the first time CGW has gone after Santa Monica-based Activision Blizzard, the largest gaming company in the world with a market cap of nearly $70.7 billion, according to Statista. In June, to June 2020, CGW Investment Group led more than 40% of the shareholders to vote against executive pay at Activision Blizzard, the largest video gaming company, or the country's largest video game company. Okay, so... Now that we've read that, let's, 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 bring, let's bring that back here. There it is. So we can see that it's not just me, the crazy YouTuber who wants people to be employed, right? It's actual people who are investing as a profession, who manage investments as a profession, who are like, hold on, that's too much. Which means it's probably too much when you get activists and establishment working together, it's probably too much. In fact, I'm going to say, it's too much. And the fact that the bonus is undetermined, well, that'll come out in filing. Because remember, anything outside of an investor call or SEC filings is a smokescreen. It's PR. Because the SEC filings and the investor calls are legal documents. And that means you have to be honest there. So we always need to look to that. Anyways, guys, that was the video. What do you think? Are you upset about more employees and support staff losing their jobs? Do you think that maybe they need to run a leaner machine? Should we stop giving executives crazy over-the-top bonuses? Remember, according to certain documents, Bobby Connacht is of the, one of the most pay, overpaid CEOs in the country, and the USA does not play when it comes to CEO pay. The average is 430 to 1. 430 times the lowest paid worker. So, that was the video. Did I miss anything? Let me know. And of course, you may see some names scrolling by on the screen right now. Let's uh, do that. You can see that. So, here's the thing. Those are my patrons. Those patrons help support me. If you want to join those illustrious members, those gods among mere mortals, you can go to patreon.com slash nimicry. The link will be in the video's description. Also, you can check me out on Twitter. That's where I post the most. And a link for my personal Discord will be down there as well. I hope that you have a pleasant day, and please stay safe out there, enjoy your games, and enjoy your life. I'll talk to you later. Bye.